the 90 year old lady in Maine that was interviewed, she told the story of being taken at six years old from a reservation. They were taking the children from seven to 13 and stripping the reservations, sending them to Carlisle. Now, over 10,000 Indians were taken by force to Carlisle and from 140 Indian nations at the time. And she was six years old, but very chubby. So they said, oh no, she's seven. We're gonna take her along with us. And they put a hundred, over 10,000 Indian children in, through this school and 158 of them graduated, actually graduated. And the cemetery is, cemetery here at Carlisle has 180 Native American graves. The one at Carlisle was 183 or 185, don't quote me on the number, but that was almost half of the Indians that were sent there to be Christianized and civilized. So out of over 10,000, only 158 actually graduated from this school. And here is one of the pieces of information. They're actually having a Carlisle Indian School Centennial Commemoration in October this year, 2018, but I guess it would be always in October. And they uh, praise the school for doing a great job and they're quite proud of it here actually. So it's just a matter of propaganda, I believe. Let me uh, go out and show you one of the original buildings as you saw in that original picture. Now we came here to Carlisle, Pennsylvania and found the Carlisle Army Base. Can't show you the whole base, but this is the original um, base that was taken because it was unused at the time. Uh, it was taken over by the Indian school back in the late uh, 1887. Anyway, uh, the Indians, they used as labor, and you can see the sports field and several other buildings were built by the Indians. So it just wasn't all education here. But the Army base was very, very welcoming to let us come on board and look at the buildings. And this map was given to us by the Welcome Center to um, show us which buildings to look for, where the museums were, and they were very kind. So we're just going to walk around a little bit and show you just a brief overview because this would take you several days to see all of this. Um, we don't have that luxury of time. So what we're going to do is show you the main parts and you can research this on the internet and also Cumberland County has a big write-up on it. And you, they also have published a list of the Indians that were taken and from what nations that went through this school. So if you contact the Cumberland County Historical Society in Pennsylvania, they can supply you with a website with a list of all the names. And I'll get you what I can just by walking around briefly. And here again is that famous picture of the Indian school. And we have come to the courtyard of the original location of the Indian school. And I'll show you that building here in just a second. Now these white buildings are the original buildings. And to what I understand, the stone buildings were built with labor from the Indians. There's the world famous gazebo in the center. All right, this would be the teachers or professors housing. And I think the administrator's office. His dwelling, I'll have to look on the map, but his dwelling is different than that. So here you are looking at it, that exact building that original building of the Carlisle Indian School where that famous picture was taken with the thousands of Indian children all lined up on this lawn right here. And this is a midday in April in Pennsylvania. So you can see there's no leaves on the trees yet. And this is just an unusually beautiful day. It's rained for several days getting here. But this is the lawn if you look up Carlisle Indian School, well, you'll see those 
uh, thousands of Indian children right there. And let me give you a quick overview. This building way in the, in the distance, that's the oldest building on this facility. That stone building back there, at least that's what it said on the map. And there's a museum there too. But you pretty much this square with the white buildings, this is the original location. And like I say, the stone buildings and that white building over there, the far white building, that was built with labor from the Indians. But the original buildings are here on the thing. The sports arena is where that flag is in the dome, way off in the distance. Hope you can see that in the dome. And that's the sports field that they also built. And they had agricultural schools, uh, business schools, uh, regular education schools, everything to get these children Christianize and civilize. And part of the story that I get, the story I did in Maine, was that the young girl was taken at six years old because she was very chubby. They said when they came to take the children at seven to 13 that she was seven, they were lying to them. So they took her at six years old to Carlisle, here to Carlisle. And they taught them English and business and everything, but if the children spoke Indian or talked about being Indian, they were put in a punishment room at the end of the hall. And when we asked her, well, did you just sit in the dark? And she said, yes, for the remainder of the day. And at the end of the day, the staff would come to the punishment room and punish you. And we said, well, what did that entail? And she said, usually they would take turns uh, in turn each day beating you until you were unconscious or sexually molesting you or raping you. And we said, my goodness, how often did this happen? And she said, well, I was a very stubborn little girl, so it happened about every day. And we said, how long did you endure this? And she said, about three and a half years that she was here at Carlisle. So the graves in the cemetery would be the people there who just wouldn't learn to be uh, civilized. And here is a picture of the superintendent, Rich Richard Pratt. This would be in that second building I showed you, the long building, where the teachers were housed. That would be his office. <laughs> 